Welcome to Hope is Here, bringing hope to those struggling with life's difficult situations. Welcome to Hope is Here. My name is Greg Horn, and I want to talk to you today about four habits to fortify your faith. Four habits to fortify your faith. Um, as I've shared before, uh, I've just had a lot of mentors from a distance, uh, people like John Maxwell, Dr. David Jeremiah, Charles Stanley, uh, Joyce Meyer, just been blessed to have uh, so many people that, Chuck Swindoll, people that have really spoken to my life through listening to their radio programs, uh, YouTube, podcast, um, just really, really been blessed. And, uh, another guy that's uh, really poured a lot into my life spiritually from a distance is uh, Rick Warren. And he, he recently wrote about this, Four Habits to Fortify Your Faith. And uh, things I love about Rick Warren is uh, he keeps it simple. And I'm a simple guy. And so I want to share these things that he shared. Plus, I'm going to add a few things that kind of spoke to me as I read this. Um, the first thing is, is that uh, if you want God to use you, uh, then you have to fortify your faith. Uh, second or first Timothy chapter four, verse seven says, spend your time and energy in the exercise of keeping spiritually fit. And, you know, I mean, let's be honest. I don't think uh, many people wake up thinking I get to exercise today. Um, to be honest with you, I don't, uh, I've been going to stronger life and working out four times a week, very consistently over the past year and a half. But, um, I also know that once I go, I'm always glad that I did. Uh, it helps me physically. It helps me mentally. It even helps me emotionally. Well, same thing, uh, to get the most out of your spiritual exercise. Uh, I think there's four spiritual habits that, uh, that will help fortify your faith. And the biggest thing is just doing them. I mean, uh, it's real simple. The first one we're talking about is study the Bible. Uh, you know, uh, it's great to list other people, and I shared at the beginning of this program how I've been influenced by many, many wonderful teachers of God's Word. But you know what? God wants to speak to you individually, and we don't want to just always go off what other people teach us. And one of the things I love is when I've challenged people that I've mentored or where I've pastored before uh, about Bible reading plans or certain studies. And honestly, uh, you know, a very small percentage usually follow through and do those. But the ones that have have come to me over the years and will just say, you know, you have had so much influence on me, you would you can never know. And I say, well, I really appreciate that. But honestly, you've done the hard part. I've just made some suggestions, and yet you have followed through with those. And so that comes from studying the Bible personally, and it, it needs to be personal. And we, we can't just depend on somebody else's study of the Bible to fortify your faith. you got to do it yourself. And, you know, that passage in 2 Timothy chapter 3, uh, verses 16 and 17 says, all scripture is inspired by God and is useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It corrects us when we are wrong and teaches us to do what is right. God uses it to prepare and equip his people to do every good work. I'm so thankful, friends, that we can communicate with God through God's word. And when I say we, he can communicate to us and it's amazing how I can read a passage of scripture and, you know, it speaks to me and I underline, I'm a highlight, underline person in my Bible. I still old school. I use Bible apps too sometimes, but I still love just to get into my Bible and hold it and read it and write notes in it and highlight and mark things that speak to me. And it'll be amazing how I can read a chapter that I've read several times and yet Something speaks differently to me because I'm in a different season of life, plus the Holy Spirit uh, just guides and directs us and speaks to us at times uh, just right where we need to hear God. And friends, if you're not spending time with God, uh, I really want to encourage you to, do, encourage you to do it each day. I mean, it is a priority for me, and um, I, I'd like to tell you I do it every day in 90 over 95% of the time I do, but sometimes I have overslept or, uh, you know, have missed. But, man, I, I've never regretted 
uh, spending time with God because he loves to speak to us. And it's amazing how he can help change my mind, uh, my heart about something. If it's not in a, a, a good place of peace or uh, negative or uh, critical thoughts and how God's work can change that as I read it. And I just really, really want to challenge and encourage you to make sure you read the Bible. Uh, I'm going to be doing something out of Proverbs, doing uh, at least one program this week on a day of the week in Proverbs. And that's been one of my favorite books of the Bible for wisdom. And whatever the day of the month is, uh, for instance, today would be the um, 29th of May. And so I would read chapter 29. And I did that consistently for a year, and so it means I read chapter 29 12 times. And it was amazing how different verses would speak to me in that same chapter. And so God wants to speak to you. If you want to fortify your faith, you've got to spend some time studying the Bible. And, you know, I mean, as Rick Warren does say, God's Word is the get-ready manual for life. If you want to get ready to be used by God, you've got to study the Bible. So if you kind of got to have a habit of doing that and you just kind of listen to other people and your pastor and radio programs and podcasts, uh, which are all great, okay? But I really, really encourage you to spend some time studying the Bible on your own. A second way that we fortify our faith is uh, reading Christian books. Um, I was able to uh, have a week vacation uh, recently and I took a uh, three different books to read on. One, I've told you about uh, the 15 Invaluable Laws of Growth, and then uh, by John Maxwell, then a new book by Rebecca Lyons called Building a Resilient Life, which I really would recommend there. Really, really good book. And then uh, also read some of John Ortberg's book, Soul Keeping. now, my, my challenge is I'm good at starting books, but unfortunately uh, not great at finishing books. <laughs> Anybody else can relate to it me, but uh, uh, about halfway through Rebecca Lyon's book and uh, into the soul book by John Ortberg, but you know, it just it just really filled my tank and the 15 Viable Laws of Growth. I've had accountability because I've been doing that with a group uh for the past seven weeks, and uh, we read a couple of chapters, and then we uh, have a meeting where we discuss what God's spoken to us, and it's cool how I learn from other people. But Proverbs chapter 19, verse 8 says, Do yourself a favor and learn all that you can. And you, you will learn a lot more when you read books. that will help you grow spiritually. And... Um, you know, I think there's a fine balance. I mean, you know, read, read some nonfiction and things like that. We all need some time just to escape, let our brain rest, but also make sure that you work in some uh, some books of faith and help you grow in your walk with Jesus. A third way that you can fortify your faith is write out your testimony. Yeah, you know, I think the enemy's good at getting us just to kind of forget about how God uh he just transformed our lives. One day, uh, he just spoke to us, and we surrendered our one and only lives. And, uh, man, I mean, we all have a story. And the thing is, you know, sometimes people think, well, I don't feel comfortable talking about my faith with other people because I don't really know all the Bible. I don't understand all the Bible, especially if they ask about Revelation. <laughs> but you know what? Nobody can argue with your testimony. And that is just so powerful and we all have one, yet a lot of times we don't sit down to really just kind of just, you know, think that through and write it out. And, uh, uh, you know, when I've done that before, it's just amazing how uh, just think about how powerful that moment was. And then to think about how faithful that God has been in my life. And he's been faithful in your life so many, many times. And yet the enemy wants to discourage you and lie to you that, oh, man, God doesn't care, or he's never been there for you. And, you know, friends, those are lies straight from the pit of hell. But if we take time to write out our testimony again, uh, it's just amazing how it'll encourage your faith, and you can help encourage others. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15 says, Always be ready to answer everyone who asks you to explain about the hope that you have. And, you know, I'm a big hope guy, and 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 13 says, And these three, three remain, 
faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. But I do think it's really hard to, to love others uh, when you've lost hope or your faith is weak. And, um, and that's why we do hope is here to help keep your spiritual tank full. But, you know, just like nobody else can study uh, the Bible for you, nobody else can tell your story. And, you know, there's four parts to a testimony. I know some of you like to take notes, so the first part would be of your testimony because you may be saying, well, Greg, how, how do I write that out? It just seems a little overwhelming or I don't know where to start. Well, four parts here want to help you. Number one, what your life was like before you came to Jesus, what your life was like before you came to Christ. Secondly, how you realize you needed Christ in your life. I think we all get to those points, don't we, where uh, we know that, uh, man, we got to put the other knee down. Maybe we've put one knee down and life's kind of rocked our world, but we finally realize that we got to surrender uh, and put the other knee down, put both knees down and just lift our hands up to God to say, you know what, I'm going to give you the steering wheel of my life and let you be in control. A third part to your testimony is how you committed your life to Christ. And I did that as a 12-year-old little boy at a summer camp that I'm thankful my mom sent me to. But then I rededicated my life at the age of uh, 26 after uh, I kind of wandered off from God in college and um, but really got just serious about my faith again when I was a college basketball coach at Western Kentucky University and uh, rededicated my life. And I didn't have to get baptized, but I did again. It was just private between me and a friend of mine, Monty Wilkinson, who was an associate pastor at a church here in Lexington. And um, I think we did like on a Tuesday afternoon. And, you know, I didn't have to do that. The first one counted, okay. <laughs> but just for me, it was just a symbol and just kind of a cleansing of things in my past and just kind of rededicating my life to God and never dreaming that uh, fast forward uh, 12 years later, I would be uh, surrendering my life to full-time ministry. So uh, just amazing how God works in our seasons of life. And the fourth and final part of your testimony is what your life's like now. That means it's perfect. That means you have all the answers or have it all together because none of us do this side of heaven. But just how your hope's not in your circumstances, but it's in Jesus and how God's been faithful to help you over the years. So fourth and final thing, uh, if you're going to, be fortified in your faith. Number one, we talked about studying the Bible. Two, about reading other Christian books. Three, about writing out your testimony. And last but not least, you need to be part of a small group of believers. Um, you know, some churches call them life groups. Um, I've got one I'm in with a couple of guys here in Lexington. I've got another guy that I do it with long distance weekly. But uh, you know, First Thessalonians chapter five verse eleven says, "Encourage each other and build each other up." And when it comes to fortifying your faith, few things compare to regular contact with people in a small group or life group. And uh, man, you need to find people you can share life with and who will support you as you grow in your faith, encourage you, but also challenge you. And Jesus modeled this, of course. He had Peter, James, and John out of the 12 disciples. Those three guys were kind of his inner circle and guys that he did life with. So I want to encourage you to make sure you've got some people that in a circle that you're doing life with. Well, I hope these four habits will help you stay sp uh, spiritually fit and hope that you will put them in practice today and uh, know that when you do that, God will use you in ways that you can never dream or imagine. My name's Greg Horn, and this is Hope Is Here. Thank you for listening to Hope Is Here podcast. To listen to one of our previous programs or to make a tax-deductible donation, please go to our website, hopeishere.today. That's hopeishere.today. Are you over 55 looking to increase your strength, endurance, balance, coordination, and more? Fitness for folks over 55 should be more than just stretching and mild workouts. Stronger Life, fitness for people over 55, helps folks do the things that they want and need to do, from lifting heavy packages, grandchildren, and pets, to hiking the Inca Trail, created by doctors of physical therapy and led by Stronger Life certified coaches. Group classes are not only effective, but safe. A Stronger Life is a Better Life, located in Lexington. For more information, visit us online at StrongerLifeHQ.com.